Well, the Golden State Warriors and Phoenix Suns met up on Saturday night for a 113-112 thriller, which reunited Steph Curry and Kevin Durant on the same court in a game that reminded us of one of the most gutless moves in NBA history. When on July 7, 2016, these two players joined forces for the ultimate super team trump card to combat LeBron's, at the time, second career super team. And while LeBron's decision to take his talents to South Beach in the free agency period of 2010 marked the start of the super team era, the pairing of Durant and Curry was the one that decisively, in conjunction with Braun's player empowerment movement ruined the league. But it has all of a sudden been five years now since Durant decided to leave Golden State and he is now on his second team since departing the Bay Area and his second super team at that. The Suns, following an injury-riddled start to the season, were just 14 and 15 on December 26th and in the 11th spot in the West. But they have since been rolling with the health of Bradley Beal and the emergence of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker as the best scoring tandem in the league currently, with both averaging over 28 points per game. No other team in the NBA boasts a tandem of players who are both in the top 10 in league-wide scoring aside from the Suns. And since Christmas, Phoenix is 17-7 and now, which has resulted in a jump from that 11th spot all the way up to 6. All the while, the Warriors have also been rolling right towards a toilet bowl. As they have been hot, steamy ass all season long. They entered this showdown with the Suns at just 24 and 25 for the year and barely hanging on to their placement in the play-in tournament by a thread, just a half a game above Utah for the 10th spot in the conference. But Curry would shine in this one, tying the game at 110 with a running layup with under a minute to go. He then, with three seconds remaining and Golden State down 112 to 110, iced the game winning three point shot. And this game acted as a poignant reminder to us, me included, that despite Durant's statistical dominance in his three year stint with the Warriors and his back to back NBA Finals MVPs, that it is a pretty difficult case to make against the baby-faced assassin as the true best player on those teams, the actual most valuable player, and the linchpin to the most dominant team we have seen in the NBA since Shaq and Kobe's Lakers over 20 years ago. And yes, Durant was the finals MVP during those title runs, and it is difficult to point to a single actual standard or advanced metric that doesn't confirm Durant was the better player on those teams. However, Kevin Durant missed 50 games during the regular season and playoffs in his time with the Golden State Warriors. In those 50 games, the Warriors had a win-loss record of 36-14. and 14. That is good for a win percentage of 72%. While in the 53 games Steph Curry missed during their playing time together, the Warriors posted a win percentage of just 55% with a record of only 29 and 24. Clearly something isn't adding up in the Steph needed Durant narrative here. Also, to really gauge Curry's impact on not just the team, but KD himself, look no further than Durant's postseason production with his other Hall of Fame point guard in his previous his tenure with the Oklahoma City Thunder. In 91 career playoff games with Oklahoma City, Kevin Durant posted a playoff line of 29 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists per game on 45.5% shooting from the field. Whereas with Golden State, in 48 playoff games, KD dropped averages of 30 points, 7 rebounds, and 4.5 assists on 51.5% shooting from the field. While there is only a minor increase in the per game box averages, the 6% increase in overall shooting percentage is eye popping and he would see a commensurate increase in three point shooting over the time as for his playoff career in OKC. 
he shot 33% from beyond the arc, while with the Warriors, he shot 40%. This is because the mere presence of Steph Curry on the court, even when he doesn't have the ball in his hands at all, truly does affect the game in opening the entire court up. It rendered a player with KD's requisite skill set nearly unstoppable, and the Warriors in the playoffs with both KD and Steph were just that, unstoppable, at least for any of the other teams in that cupcake era. In playoff games where Kevin Durant and Steph Curry were both on the floor, the Warriors posted a 33-9 record, good for an absolutely obscene 79% win percentage. They easily won the title both seasons these two guys finished a full playoff run together, and it easily would have been a three-peat, only the second one of this century other than Kobe and Shaq had Durant not ruptured his Achilles in the 2018-19 finals round. But in the playoffs, for his career outside of Golden State, Durant has just a 63-55 and playoff record, a win percentage of only 53%. While Curry, without Durant in the playoffs, has a record of 66-39, and which is good for 63%. And Durant has made just one finals appearance ever without Steph Curry, a loss in the 2012 finals to the Miami Heat, with Curry making it to three finals in his career without Durant winning two of them. So while there has been plenty of conjecture throughout the years as to just who was more vital to the Warriors' super team run, or who is the better player when comparing Durant to Curry, perhaps ultimately the answer is as easy as the question of who would you rather have if you had to win a basketball game. While we get bogged down in the minutia of advanced analytics and stats, we sometimes forget the true measure of success in any sport is winning. And it has been pretty undeniable when evaluating these two players throughout their respective careers, who has been better at that?